welcome to Fishing Britain TV. Yeah, who is this guy? Coming up, we've got Richard Chapman out looking for some wild carp. We also explain what's in the pan yam. And the Morgans take us out and show us how easy it is to get the next generation involved in fishing. But first, Ant Glasgow Jr. and I go out for a day's fishing where we can do no wrong. And Glasgow Jr. and I have been friends for many years and we've made DVDs and films between our fishing adventures. Along with catching plenty of fish, we've had some great laughs. So what method is this, Alan? Uh, well, These guys have cost about 15 quid in more than <laughs> Luckily, as a filmmaker, a camera is never too far away to capture those unexpected things. You can't cut it. We've caught big fish, small fish, and we've even won competitions. But there are some days that stand out from them all. We decide to pop along to a local carp water where we're told that there's a few pike. We step up to the water's edge and Ant is the first to cast and he's hooked up straight away. So not to be outdone, I cast into exactly the same spot knowing that pike are competitive and if one just swam off with a meal then another may be waiting in line. Now with a double hookup straight off the bat, maybe we should keep score, not that we're competitive. Moving on, Ant points to the opposite bank, and with one cast, out comes number two for me! Ant sneaks into the same spot from the other side, and takes another one! Days like this are rare, but when they switch on, you just have to keep on going. They're coming up from the depths, out of the margins, and it feels like they're on every cast. No prize fighters yet, but these will put up a wholehearted scrap. My gill is doing a fine job. No, I don't want to kiss it. Watching these things explode on the top of the water is some of the best fun you could have on a rainy day. All caught on a small white surface lure designed for bass fishing. These things wiggling on the surface attracts way too much attention, and in comes a gull to snatch it, but he pulls up and maybe he's seen something below. Oh yes! Almost as if on a conveyor system, they just keep on coming in. These days make up for when it's hard fishing. Pike love to hang out under trees, and look at this one on the right, what a prime spot. Just as the Lord dances past, take a bow, wave. What a day, what a lake, what a show. Now, did you keep count? Let's just say Ant didn't win. He was too busy untangling the ones that I kept putting in trees. And that's what great mates are for. It's been awesome. I love this place. And thank you very much, Ant, for bringing me up here. It's all good. 
So good. Woo! What a great day. One I'll never forget. But there's still more to come. We've got fish, we've got snacks, and we've got fluff. But first, I've heard he can bench press two chocolate Labradors at the same time. It's David with the Fishing Britain News. This is Fishing Britain News. The uncle of a seriously ill little girl is going on a charity drive to try and catch as many pounds of fish as there are miles between the most western and eastern point of England. Gary Strudwick's seven-year-old niece, Georgia, was diagnosed with the rare disease called Rett syndrome. Gary aims to catch 446 pounds of fish, which is the same number of miles from Land's End, England's most western point, to Lowestoft in Suffolk, the easternmost point. Visit justgiving.com forward slash Georgia's Rod Race. Four guys travelling in a motorhome have achieved something very similar, but in the States. Chase McGarry, Pete Wilson, Matt Wurzinski and Jack Fingen went on the fishing trip of a lifetime to 16 states in one old motorhome hoping to catch a lot of fish. They aim to create Hitch and Fish, a film that will show America through fishing. To fund the trip, they posted their project on Kickstarter with the goal of raising $33,000 in 24 days. Now they're trying to sell it as a TV show. Back in the UK and the Big One Fishing Show took place in Farnborough last weekend. It included hundreds of trade stands and exhibitions, thousands of fishermen and women, a food hall, lectures and presentations, as this film by Back of the Landing Net, Carp Fishing Shows. Now do you fancy some fishing that'll do the world of fishing some good? The Wild Trout Trust auction takes place on eBay and by post from the 4th to the 13th of March 2014. There are 258 lots, mainly fishing days and holidays, but also books, art, tackle, flies and shooting. See the catalogue at wildtrout.org. And finally, a lady angler from Auckland has caught the New Zealand record Pacific bluefin tuna. Donna Pascoe, who runs a fishing charter business, reeled in the 900 pound fish after a four hour battle, and she may have also landed herself a world record. They took it to the Huhora Big Game and Sports Fishing Club where it was weighed, photographed and put on ice. The current world record also from New Zealand is 738 pounds. You are now to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. What a ray of sunshine. Last week, Jan Porter did some cooking on a fishing programme. What was that about? Let's explain it. Ready? All together now. What's in the pan, Yam? Our good friend Jan Porter has been cooking up on the bank for years after getting fed up with eating maggot-flavoured soggy sarnies. So he decided, whilst waiting for the fish to bite, he would come up with some simple and easy snacks for himself to cook on the bank with the minimal amount of effort and hardly any equipment. It all started on his Facebook page when he would post pictures of the pan and describe what was in it. The idea mashed together his nickname at school back in the early 14th century of panyan that was some sort of pickle and something he saw somewhere that was something like what's in the wok og or something. So now in glorious 2D moving picture scope smell-o-vision, Jan makes us avocado cheese and pickle casadillas. In essence what we have is tortillas Chug them in the pan, I'm just going to warm them up. I'm going to add to that a bit of avocado, I've already sliced this up, so I'm just going to bosh that on there. And then I'm going to mash it around with a spoon. And then I'm going to squidge on some smooth pickle. A big dollop of that. Smear that around as well. Now it's starting to steam nicely. Then we're going to add some cheese. This is just pre-bought packet cheese. Emmental, just for the record. I'm just going to sprinkle some of that on. I get another tortilla and then stick that on the top there. And I'm just going to cook that through and let the cheese melt. I'm not going to flip it like a pancake, I'm just going to put a plate on there, turn it over, and then just transfer it to the other side. I'm just going to keep that eating through. If you want to get the heat to come through a little bit more, and also advantageous to use a lid, and that'll just bounce the heat back, and it saves using more gas. So just leave that now for probably three, five minutes, depending on if you like it crispy or burnt. 
and then it'll be ready to eat. Mmm, thanks, Jan. I've seen some worse things on that come dine with me. Join us next time for some cheeky chorizo bankside pasta. So there you go. That completely clears all that up. We've still got the Morgans to come, but first, let's get Richard on those wild carp. You join us here today on what is a very windy February day. We're in pursuit of wild carp. So, what is a wild carp? It's the original strain that was brought over to the UK by the monks in the 14th century. It's from this one strain of carp that all the variations we have today have stemmed from. The carp was brought over as a food source for the monks, but obviously in the kitchen, a common carp is going to take a lot of preparation, descaling, and it's going to take a lot of time. So some monk decided to solve this. By selectively breeding them, he created all sorts of strains of mirrors. By having less scales on them, obviously it took a lot less time in the kitchen. So ultimately, they were going to create the leather carp. So we've got the rods all clipped up, so that all that's left to do now is clip on the PVA bag and get them out there. As you can see, we've got sweet corn in the PVA bag. Normally, being wet, it's going to melt it straight away. So all we've done, a little tip here, add some rock salt to your corn, mix it all up. The salty water won't melt the PVA, so then you can put it in there nice and safe in the knowledge that it's not going to melt before you cast it out. Getting that. The key thing today, we're just trying to keep things really simple. Tackle wise, just a smallish cart reel, that's on a two and a quarter pound test curve cart rod, so scaling it down a bit, 12 pound line on there, so they're not, they're not going to be massive fish, but they do fight hard, so it's about balancing the tackle, so you can get them in, but still have a bit of fun with them. Going down to the rig, again, dead simple. No, no tubing, no leads, anything like that. Just main line straight through to a swivel. I've put a little, little bit of putty on there just to sink it all down. And then you've got a leg clip on there with a little, little lead. I think that's about one and a half ounce. The rig itself, all I've got, coated braid, about six to eight inches long, little size eight hook on there, and a single grain of artificial corn. That's buoyant, so it's nicely balanced out. So the hook's gonna be lined on the bottom, but the, pot, the corn's just gonna be, gonna be popped up above it. made a move we've gone round to the other side of the lake uh, we've got the rods out the back on the alarm so hopefully we might even get a take as is often the case with winter fishing it's it's not looking great we've not had any action as of yet a couple of liners but nothing to really write home about final quick tip avoid carp fishing in winter it's not great we've decided we're going next week tarpon fishing in florida providing we can get some funding off the guys at fishing britain I'll book the tickets. We'll all go. Are you going to wear that silly hat? Crazy kids and their crazy fashions. Here at Fish in Britain, we're a little bit concerned that not enough kids are getting into the sport. There's lots of organisations out there that are doing a grand job to encourage them in. But it's not only about learning fishing. There's nature, there's wildlife, and how to get over colds quickly. But we need to make it cool again. Have you got any ideas? Then post a comment on our Facebook page. Hal has come up with a few ideas of his own, and he shows us how much fun it can be as a family. Fresh air, exercise, and even sunshine. Who wouldn't want to be on the bank side on a day like this? And you lot know what I mean. But have you ever tried to get kids off their mobile phones and their Xboxes and get them involved in the sport? No? Well, I'm going to share a few tricks that I use to get mine involved. These two are really enjoying themselves, but where do you start? Now, the simplest and easiest thing to do is to take your child along to a coarse fishery. You can get a short whip. Now, that's all it is, it is a long piece of carbon, float on the end, Fill weight, maggots on the hook, and drop it down. 
no technique, no casting, nothing, just pushing it out, dropping it down. And I've seen kids in shows that come and catch their first fish and the grin on their face, well, it's well worth seeing. But moving on from that, we've got spinning. Now Tanya's got, and this rod I had to buy last weekend in the show. Why? One, it's pink. It's got a pink reel. But the ultimate thing, the reel flashes <laughs> when she reels in. So uh, it, was, um, it was a must. She had to have it. Now the thing with spinning, the only difficult part is learning when to let go of the line. So Tanya's a master at it now. She puts the line in her first finger, in the index finger, lifts the bail arm over, takes it back slowly and pushes it forward. Don't look at me, you just carry on casting. There we go. Straight, simple, really, really nice cast. And then close the bail arm and then reel in. Now, a lot of people say years and years of practice to master the technique of fly casting. There's a few things you can do. Tendency with children is to have their arms away. And, and so let's get it really, really simple. F number one is the timing. That's all we did with Tanya when she was three and a half years of age. We went tick tock. And that's all she did on the back cast was she went tick tock. And that's it. Don't complicate it. Do it again. Tick tock. That's as simple as it. Tendency as well with children to take their hands right up here. It's a little trick for you. A little tip. Tell them to, oi, okay. Tell them to pick up the phone. And what they're going to do, they're going to pick up the phone straight away. As you can see, Tanya's le left-handed, she picks it up like that. They're not going to pick up the phone like that. Do it again. There we go. The other one is, they tend to take the rod too far back. Simple, easy, stand behind them, right? Put your hand up to protect yourself and go tick, tock, there. Now this sounds really, really boring. Pick up the phone, tick, tock, kick it back, push it forward. So what do we do? It's a hula hoop out there big lump of bright wool and then have a bit of fun competition time two sisters right come on in you two who can hit it no you missed yet tanya's in now suddenly they're not learning to cast they're just having a bit of fun and the brighter the wool the bigger it is the better they can see ah tanya hit yasmin out yasmin hit tanya out yasmin out tanya out and what this is teaching them is one, to be accurate, but it's great for hand-eye coordination. It's teaching them patience as well, <laughs> because there's a, and it's teaching them determination, so they crack it, so they can cast. But what happens when they go out there and they hook a fish? What's going to happen now? Jasmine is going to take Tanya's line and she's going to play a fish. So Tanya's now going to try and keep it tight. When she goes away, let it slide through your finger, like that, right? When she comes back towards you, you have to pull it in. That's it. Let it go, Tanya. Let it slide. That's it. Good, 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 good. Pull in. Pull, 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 pull. Quick, pull in. Pull. Look, the slack line. Quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. Right. And up the rod, up the rod. Right. Right. And that's what you have to do. Make it fun. It's not all about the casting and having fun. Once they've mastered that, they go out on the water and put a fly on. But what fly? Now, in here, very, very quick selection for you. These are buzzers. They live on the bottom of the lake. But there are nymphs as well. They swim around. And then when they hatch, right, they, sit, they get trapped in the surface film. Yeah. And you've got a caddis there, I'll care. That will sit right in the surface film. And you've got a dry there as well. And if you look at this closely, right, it's got legs. So it can represent a daddy long legs, something like that, sitting on the top there, or a hawthorn fly. So there you go. Those, when you're fishing with these, you're representing the insects that live on or the ones that land on the surface. So I'm going to get you on a buzzer, all right? Yasmin, we're going to be the nasty side. <laughs> the good thing with that, a lot of movement in the tail. So remember when you're retrieving it, you've got to... Be erratic with the retrieve, okay? Mess them about. Tanya, you, buzzer. But I'm going to put a strike indicator for you, right? Little float. What do you say? Okay, good. Let's go fishing. Oh, 
guys, get involved. You could be out here joining me. We could be having a right laugh. It is cold and windy, but just wrap up warm. You can go out, go to mountain stores and be like, get some warm clothes. Parents will be spending money then. That's a bonus, I guess. Come on, guys, get involved. <laughs>